right. Hello, everybody. Wow, only 17 minutes left. I hope, uh, hope I don't hit the bottom. So, welcome to this talk called uh, The Age of NFT Capitalism. I just coined this term. I don't really know what it means. I hope it will mean something for you as much as it means something for me after this talk. Um, or three predictions about next year. So, my name is Jerome. You can find me here. Uh, on most social media, I'm this, uh, this guy. Um, I run a game called Cometh, and I also am the president of Ethereum France, organizing HCC. Um, it's a pleasure to be here with you all and seeing good events like this. Uh, we hope to do HCC again next year in July. Uh, think about it if you want to make the move to Paris in July. We'd love to have you guys with us. I'm giving away space bars. I only have one left. So first, uh, first come, first serve. And yeah, so we run a video game company. What does it mean? Uh, you should check it out. It's called cometh.io. Um, you can subscribe to our, um, to, our, to our newsletter and get some stuff. We do games as NFT games or blockchain engine based games. So what we like to do is run the engine of the game inside the blockchain and see what we can do with this. One cool thing we can do by running the engine of the game in the blockchain is connecting thousands of people together and uh, having fun with, uh, with each and every one at the same time. Um, one thing we do as well is uh, plugging the thing to a blockchain service hub. So if you have a blockchain service, like you are doing DeFi or you're doing uh, node management and so on, we try to ease the access of those services to our players. So if you have stuff and you want to talk, let's find me and grab a beer and uh, we can discuss how we can integrate you. Um, now, a new game is, is a work in progress, so I'm not going to give you a demo of the game or talking about the, to, about the game anymore. Um, but it's going to be super cool, and if you want to play a game with me, uh, you can find me as well. I, I'll, I'll, I'll gladly uh, spend some time and, and fight you. Um, one of the things we like to do with our games as well is bring utility to other people's NFT. So if you have some NFTs on your wallet, you can use them on Cometh. Uh, so here's uh, actual footage of the game. Um, if you equip the right NFT, you're going to get access to some quests, you're going to get access to some special abilities and so on. So don't forget to um, subscribe to our mailing list because you hear the awesome news and you get some stuff. Um, yeah. So when I was working for this talk, um, I heard about new things that are um, fancy in the banking ecosystem. Are you ready? <laughs> Have you heard about SPACs? SPACs. Can you, uh, yeah, it's really, it's really a cool world. Like, hey, did you, have you heard about SPACs? So it's an acronym for Spatial Purpose Acquisition Company, which, okay, bear with me. You're like, you create, a, you create a company. You go to the US, you go to wherever, you say, I'm creating this company, it's going to be a SPAC. Okay, so what are you going to do? We are going to go straight IPO. IPO right away. My SPAC is IPO right away. And what is the purpose of the company? We want to buy another company. Oh, well, great purpose, but what company? You don't tell. You don't tell what company you are going to buy. You just tell, well, I'm going to buy a pharmaceutical company. I'm going to buy a fintech company. I'm going to buy something. Okay, fine. So now you are incorporated looking to buy something and raising money directly to the public in order to buy something. Oh, wow. It, I think the sound is much better. Whoa. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. Um, so initially, your SPAC has absolutely no business, absolutely no record, nothing, no, no nothing. It's just a empty shell with a blank check, okay? And anyone can invest in your SPAC. You can even get a call from your local banker saying, hey, I'm your bank account manager and I saw that you have uh, $1,000 on your account. Like, do you want to invest in something fun? There is an IPO going on for a SPAC that wants to buy a blockchain company. Whoa, sounds interesting. And then you can invest in those. Um, and, and now as the SPAC owner, you have two years where you need to complete the acquisition or give the money back. But for those two years, you're sitting on your, on your, on your money and, and eventually you will announce that you are going to buy this. Yeah, and it's going completely crazy. Um, you can even ask for the service of a celebrity to chill your SPAC. Uh, remember the time where Floyd Mayweather was chilling ICOs? Well, well that's kind of this. Uh, actually, Jay-Z sold his uh, cannabis company through a SPAC. 
And if you look at the numbers, well, one SPAC per year, 12 SPACs per year, now we are at like 500 SPACs per year. Sounds crazy, right? It's like an ICO without a white paper directly on Stock Exchange. So here's an example uh, that's Lucid. Um, oh, by the way, I, I don't own any Lucid shares, but I may own some tokens that I'm featuring in this talk, of course. So here's Lucid. Lucid is a electric vehicle company um, founded in like 2008 or 2009. Um, they have people from Tesla working here and so on. And they are claiming that they can build this beautiful car with a large range, uh, lots of horsepower, and decently cheap compared to other electric vehicle, right? And they were running out of cash, which doesn't happen that much in the crypto ecosystem, but who knows? Maybe we'll, uh, we'll need cash at some point. And a group called Churchill Capital Corp did a SPAC, raised some money, like $1.8 billion, saying that they were they will just buy out an electric vehicle company and they merged their fund with Lucid. And from the get-go, right after the merge, the merge, um, Lucid become traded. So hey, IPO without, yeah, without much, just no white paper, just IPO. Remember those days when we were doing ICOs? Um, shout out to the PwC guys, if you are watching this talk. Uh, the PwC report that you used to publish every year was really great. I hope you publish it again. Here's a, here's a graph from uh, the 2020 uh, PwC report about ICO. Over three years, we raised by ICO over $31 billion, so that's a lot of money. And here's Uniswap. So one thing that I like about this ecosystem is that when we get lots of tokens on our wallet, we at some point find a way to use those tokens. And an and a not so unpopular opinion in this ecosystem is that since we were having this ICO craze with having everybody and their mothers uh, selling token, buying token, sending token, at some point we figured out that we need to use those tokens. Hence the DeFi ecosystem, the DeFi emergence, we have tokens that we need to do stuff with, but like, what are we going to do? So Uniswap and uh, other DeFi stuff, uh, I think, came from uh, all of those ICO and, uh, and token emissions. And since then, we are selling tokens to each other and trading tokens to each other. Meanwhile, in NFT City, uh, it's like the blockchain space is living in a parallel universe. We also invest in cars. Here's a, a fun project that supercharged everything uh, regarding, um, re regarding NFTs and ICO. So I first did an ICO on SushiSwap with Miso, saying we are selling donuts. Cool. What do you get for donuts? Well, you get a donut token. Cool. What do you do with your donut token? Well, for one donut token, you can mint one Sedona. And here's an example of a beautiful Kia Sedona. Um, yeah, that was the release. A pre pretty fun, pretty fun project. Uh, I own some Sedonas, disclaimers. But that's that's where you can get. You can sell. Well, uh, we do an ICO and then we mint from the token. And what's interesting for me is that while the NFTs are traded, there is a floor price for the NFTs that are traded. There is also a listing of the token, so you can do some arbitrage between I want to buy the token or I want to buy the NFT. And eventually, when the the 10,000th dona will be minted, there won't be any token anymore to trade. So you can imagine that the price of the last token may, may do funny things with its price. Anyway, those things are happening all together. So I'm going to try to predict stuff, uh, come back next year and see if anything has happened. First off, 2020, 22, 23 will certainly be the years where we will see a lot of NFT integration into DeFi. In many sense, I, I think the NFTs are a better way to do securitization than we thought it would be for ERC-1400 or for ERC-777 and all those, those uh, standards that try to do securitization of, uh, or tokenization of securities. Things like the diamond uh, standard or uh, the 1155 are probably good ways to represent securities, probably good ways to represent bonds, good ways to represent shares. So we're definitely going to have NFTs as collateral or lending protocol. So get ready for this. Uh, it's already happening in some projects. 
tokenization of large orders is something that's going to be super fun as well. And using NFTs to give access to API boost or specific strategies or specific membership is already happening as well. Uh, here's an example of uh, what StakeDAO is doing with the Leviathan and other NFTs they mint. If you own the NFT, you get access to specific vaults. And right now we have 21,000 uh, ERC721 ERC smart contracts that have been deployed. And looking back, it's like 1,000 times more than what it was three years ago. So huge success for this. KYC tokens may be a good use case as well. Prediction number two. We're going to have blockchain hostile takeovers. So two things that we can do with this. First, um, here's a recipe for TriteFi migration. It may or may not work from a legal perspective, so you'll have to pay some lawyers to structure it right. But technically speaking, you create a company in a blockchain-friendly regulation environment, and you say, that's my blockchain fund. So here's the emission. Just send me some money, do some KYC, ICO, back in the day style. You get the NFT. The NFT represents your share in the fund, and I'm collecting money because I will invest in blockchain stuff. On the side, you also create a SPAC. So you touch both the blockchain guys and the traditional guys saying, well, that's cool. I'm, I'm creating this SPAC to uh, merge and acquire a major blockchain fintech. So you want to call the, the your, your, your distributor is going to call people, your broker dealer is going to call people, and you're going to raise some money for your SPAC. Now, your SPAC is technically listed at this stage. Your NFT fund and your SPAC get together, and they acquire, uh, let's say, you take a majority stack in, stake in uh, Lido, or they take a majority stake in uh, Curve, for example, a uh, good project that you want to invest in and bring to the public. As a majority stake owner in the DAO, you now control the DAO, and you can declare this DAO a publicly listed company because you actually have the SPAC for doing that. So let's hope we see that happen because it's going to be a tons of fun. But you can also do it strictly in the blockchain space, saying I'm emitting some NFTs, and with those NFTs, we're going to buy some DAO's token. Oh, and by the way, I can also participate to this NFT emission by just sending out the DAO token. So now you are actually becoming a lobby, a lobby for DAO token owners through the NFTs, of course. And yeah, five minutes. Last prediction. Um, we've Try to do DAOs, and many people are trying to do DAOs well. Some people are doing it well as well. Uh, we had the DAOist conference this week. It was awesome as well. But voting is painful, and tracing who owns the tokens and how the token is moving, while also providing liquidity for the token, is really complex. NFTs is a way to make your DAO work a little better, because you make the membership or the stake in the DAO based on the NFT. So it kind of switched the model to things that can be a little bit more, um, more efficient and, and better for the structuring of a project. Example, as an NFT funded company, you can say that the NFTs you emit are the assets you are building the infrastructures for. So you're selling NFTs that are beautiful, that are cool to wear, cool to show on Twitter, but also that have utility in an infrastructure that you want to use. Here's the example of what we try to achieve with our game studio. Uh, we do some initial funding with NFTs. We represent game assets with those NFTs. And we bring premium features to the NFT holders. And then those NFTs are usable from one game to another. Hopefully, they retain some value because of the usage you can do with it. And they are a form of license rights over what the studio is producing. And that's it for me. Thank you for listening.